Good afternoon, my name is Toby and today we learn something about TurboPack. But therefore we need to understand bundling first, because that's what TurboPack is. It's a bundler, not only for Next.js and very fast. So let's understand what bundling means. And for that I scaffolded out something on Excalibur. So what the hell is bundling? So the first step of bundling is that we have a entry point and the bundler needs to find that. So what is the entry point? Maybe a main.js? Maybe it's your root layout TSX at your Next.js project. The next step is that the bundler creates a dependency graph. So it determines which components use actually which dependency and creates a big graph out of that. After that, it gets to the transformation. So I wrote down here, make old out of new. And what that means is bundlers try to support most browsers. And while we developers strive to always use the newest technology stuff and the newest ECMAScripts, the bundlers don't like that. So they take the new code and transform it to more older code for more browsers to get a better compatibility. And then we have the optimization. So here we have concepts like tree shaking or minimization. Maybe you heard that already because yes, sometimes you do. So tree shaking just means getting rid of unused or dead code. And minimization means that you have your fancy names of variables or methods like get user data by ID. And that's just minimized to one or two letters. So the code gets shorter and shorter to get actually faster. And then we already have the last step, which is one or more bundles get created. For example, with code splitting, I wrote down here, because sometimes not only one bundle gets created and instead even more bundles get created, dependent of if you have code splitting in your application, if you split it some parts there, then maybe you get more bundles, but usually you get one big bundle. And that's already it on that side. So that's how a bundler generally works. The biggest bundler that we currently have out there is called Webpack. And Webpack is great, but it's actually a little bit slow. So let's compare it to TurboPack. For that, I made a small table here to compare them. And the first thing is that Webpack is just slow. It's written in JS, it's already a little bit older, and TurboPack is written in Rust. And that's why it's faster, because Rust is actually pretty quick. Next thing is that Webpack is more widely used with a big community. On the other hand, TurboPack is not used a lot because it's actually still pretty new. It's still in beta. And yeah, the developer community is not that big right now. But with TurboPack, you get some nice advancements like incremental computation. What that actually means, I don't want to go in too much detail here because that can get pretty complex. But what that means is that TurboPack is smarter than Webpack. It remembers certain things and caches certain things. And with doing that, things just get even faster. And maybe you wonder right now, who made Webpack and who made TurboPack? Actually, kind of the same person. Like the creator of Webpack is now working on TurboPack. And certainly I think that creates a feeling of more trust and more knowledge into that project. So now we learned what a bundler is and now we learn what the difference between Webpack and TurboPack is. But how do you actually use TurboPack right now? How is it working? And for that, we jump into a simple project here. It's important that you know that TurboPack is currently only supported by Next.js. But things will change. So I think they want to support Svelte and Vue once it gets out of beta and is stable in production. So now we're into a Next.js project and we activate it. And the activation is actually hilariously simple. You just go into your package.json and then to the scripts object and you just write behind the dev command, next dev, you just write TurboPack. Like that. And that's all. So if I now start the server with pmpm run dev and we see next dev TurboPack runs and that's already how you achieve to use TurboPack. But how much faster is it now? Let's take a look here because I've hidden something from you and that's these numbers. So we have up to 76% faster local server setup, 96% faster code updates with fast refresh and 45% faster initial route compile. So all these benefits are you getting with just adding this minus minus TurboPack behind your next dev command. Sounds great, right? But what is now the problem? We see the problem if we scroll a little bit down here because we get a warning here, Webpack is configured while TurboPack is not, which may cause problems. And that's kind of the biggest problem with TurboPack out there right now, the compatibility. So I told you there's the Webpack API and Webpack plugins and all that stuff. And while TurboPack wants to support most of the popular plugins of Webpack, it doesn't aim to support 100%. It wants to be a yeah kind of new thing. So that's probably the problem for older projects with a lot of dependencies into Webpack because it can get kind of hard to transform this to TurboPack. And then there are some additional concepts like CSS chunking, which is not fully available right now. And that's why you see on the Turbo website that where you have TurboPack, that it's just in beta. So it's not fully ready right now. 
but you can use it in local development and it's way faster. And on the other hand here, you see Tobo Repo, which is a great idea for a next video. So if you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel. And there's actually a pretty cool website called Are We Tobo Yet, where you can see how many yeah, next build tests are passing. So there are now 163 left of 7,111. And yeah, you can just follow the process here and see when Turbo Repo gets actually stable for production. Thank you for watching this video. Have a great evening or a great day or a great morning, whatever time you're at. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.